Principles of Microeconomics, Chapter 13, Positive Externalities and Public Goods. The discussion for this chapter will surround why private sectors underinvest in innovation and how can governments encourage that. Also, the definition of what a public good is. Forager One was launched in 77, and in 2012 it entered interstellar space. And so it's the first thing it ever did that we've made, and it's expected, expected to send data and images back to Earth until 2025. Uh, such a technological feat has a lot to do with economic principles. Why the pro private sector underinvest in innovation? Market competition provides uh, discovering new technology because a firm can make higher profits. That's the sole, you know, pretty much the sole motivation. Um, by finding a way to produce goods cheaper, you know, more better, and you know, with more features. And in some cases, competition can discourage a new technology. Um, probably a good example is the uh, the idea of CD ROM, read write CD ROMs. You know, they carried about 600 megabytes originally, and they were still selling 200 megabyte hard drives this is, uh, ages ago in the 90s. But it was basically the computer manufacturers who made disk drives stifling the new technology because they hadn't made enough money off the old. So it, took, it actually delayed the uh, introduction of read writable disks, you know, for five to seven years. Uh, economists have also found that the original investor receives one third of the, to one half of the total economic benefit from innovations, while other businesses and new product users receive the rest. Positive externalities of new technology, private benefits when they consume a good or service or a new products benefit in a process that a company invents. You know, so basically it's you know, what the individual gets out of it. Social benefits is what society as a whole will benefit. So if you uh, say social benefits would be equal to the private benefits plus the external benefits. And positive externalities or benefits are benefit, beneficial spillovers to a third party or party. These are three definitions you may see in the test. Positive externalities and technology. So big drug faces a cost of borrowing of 8%. And if the firm only receives private investing of R&D, then we show the demand curve by you know, for financial capital by D of private here. And the equilibrium cost will occur at 30 million. So 8%. 30 million. However, because there's a spillover benefit, society would find it optimal to have $52 million of benefit where equilibrium one you know, is derived. So social benefits basically outweigh the uh, private ones in this particular example. Now that's it. You know, the firm, if it could uh, derive complete benefit, then they probably would spend a $52 million but it's really not likely. So it'll, it'll borrow less than the social optimal level of 52 million. And, okay, why invest in human capital? Uh, the idea that higher ed educational uh, levels can uh, serve to increase a person's future productivity and subsequent ability to earn. Uh, through several studies, college education is, you know, basically about 10 to 15 percent and private rates of return go primarily to the individual and for example earning interest on a savings account society gains what people learn the social rate of return on schooling is also positive better health outcomes lower levels of crime a cleaner environment a more stable and democratic uh, government uh, social rate of return is an estimated when rates of return go primarily to society. Um, you might want to think on, okay, what's going on in uh, today's current society? Do you believe that we are becoming better and, and more well-educated? Or do you think perhaps 
it's being diluted to the degree that it is changing the societal fabric. Positive externalities response, you know, it's uh, the public response to a positive externality is, uh, is to help the party creating the positive externality receive a greater share of the social, uh, social benefit. An example is a market for flu shots with spillover benefits. So this is considered a positive externality. And the equilibrium of flu shots produced in a market where NPB is equal to NPC. So they are talking about this point right here. So that's the quantity that goes to market at this price to the market. The market demand curve does not reflect the positive externality of flu vaccinations. So Q of market will be exchanged. This outcome is inefficient because the marginal social benefit exceeds the marginal social cost. And so you can see here the difference of a subsidy. Here continued, if the government provides a subsidy equal to the MSB minus the MPB, then the level of vaccinations can increase to the socially optimal level, Q. How governments can encourage innovation. Uh, guaranteeing intellectual property rights are some examples. Uh, giving grants for research. Uh, cooperate research ventures between universities and companies. And so intellectual property rights, you know, they could be, you know, in the form of patents or copyright laws, all terms that you might want to know for the test. And this is patents filed and granted between 1981 and 2012. And so you have the number of patents filed and the number of patents granted. And you notice that the filings are far greater than the amount of patents that are actually granted. Yeah. Government spending on R&D. Uh, the private sector does not usually have sufficient incentive to carry that out R&D, but if the government steps in, you know, to, and you know, subsidizes it, then that begins to, uh, you know, encourage businesses to get involved. Colleges and universities, nonprofits are two primary areas where research is done. Then you have government run labs and sometimes uh, private firms will be in, enlisted to help. Another incentive is tax breaks for research and development. This is probably one of the most uh, popular things. Uh, there is a you know, research uh, tax credit uh, that you know, causes firm to invest at least a dollar or more in R&D. So, it is, you know, it can you know, be uh, incorporated in a government plan by using tax incentives. Sometimes governments will get involved in partnerships or grants for innovative projects. Uh, some examples, National Institutes of Health, National Academy of Science, Agricultural Food Initiative. So these are, you know, partner, you know, the partnering between government funded universities and academies and the private sector can spur production and innovation and create whole new industries. The idea is to come up with new and better products. Okay, what is a public good? A public good is non-excludable and non-rival and is difficult for market producers to sell to individual consumables. So uh, these are definitions of non-excludable and non-rival and so Examples that they want to give is fire and police service and national defense. And uh, those are very good examples. Uh, a public good also could be water, although there are arguments over water rights and the like uh, in you know, certain regions of the country. And so that could be a very big legal battle. But just some things, uh, you know, basically things that nature pr provides, you know, everyone as a whole, that would be considered a public good. 
free rider problem of public goods. A free rider is someone who wants others to pay for the public good and then they use it for themselves. And so if too many people do this, uh, the, the public good may never be provided. And so a way to be expressed, this can be expressed as the uh, prisoner's dilemma game or Monte Carlo theory. The role of government paying for public goods. Uh, this, you know, but, you know, they, the, the reason for this is to ensure everyone will make a contribution and to prevent uh, key, you know, free riders. This is uh, done through government spending and taxes. In some cases, markets can produce public goods and, an indi and create an indirect way for charging it for it. Radio is a public good, but revenue is made by selling advertising, for instance, and charging the listeners by taking up some of their time with it. Social pressures and personal appeals can also reduce the number of free riders and to collect the resources for the uh, public good itself. There are three primary factors related to public uh, health programs and goods that are positive externalities to society. Uh, let's say sanitation systems where you provide clean water and uh, clean streets, clean air. Uh, that helps uh, prevent transmission of diseases, medical discoveries, immunizations, antibiotics, high blood pressure reducers are some examples. Uh, changes of public behavior, and you've seen a lot of that, a great deal of that now. Hand washing is certainly something people are talking about a great deal. How food is stored, uh, uh, reducing the number of smokers, and uh, the precautions against STDs. You know, these are examples of changes in public uh, behavior, and these all influence longer lifespans. This ends chapter 13.